ಪದೇನ ವಾಚಾ ಮಲಂ ಶರೀರ ವೈದ್ಯಕೇನ ಯೋಪಾಕರೋತ್ತ ಪ್ರವರ ಮುನೀನಾ ಪತಂಜಲಿ ಪ್ರಾಂಜಲಿರಾನತೋಸ್ಮಿ ಆಬಾಹು ಪುರುಷಾಕಾರ ಶಂಖಚಕ್ರಾಸಿಧಾರಿಣ ಸಹಸ್ರಶಿರಸ್ವೇತ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಪತಂಜಲಿ ಹೋಪ್ ಯು ಬಿನ್ ಫೈಂಡಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಎಪಿಸೋಡ್ಸ್ ಸೋ ಫಾರ್ ಬೋತ್ ಇನ್ಫರ್ಮೇಟಿವ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯೂಸ್ಫುಲ್ ಇನ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಎಪಿಸೋಡ್ ವಿಡ್ ಬಿ ಸೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಉತ್ಕಟಾಸನ್ ಉತ್ಕಟಾಸನ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಬೋತ್ ಇಂಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪವರ್ಫುಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಸೀ ವೈಲ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಆಸನ Utkatasan truly is both intense and powerful. I would like to clarify one point regarding asana. In the Ashtanga Yoga format presented by Sri Patanjali, asana and pranayama are one or are two of the eight limbs in Ashtanga Yoga, which means asana is not just a posture. It is a method of creating self-awareness. our immediate accessories by which we could raise our awareness and observation is our body it is the most important tool our temple in an asana we have to make sure that we are inviting every fragment every part of the body to participate in an asana so that it culminates into yoga and that is a very important essence also i'd like to emphasize that we are ordering the episodes in such a way that the preceding as well as succeeding episode are aligned in such a way that they deliver a meaning a meaningful sequence so it's not a random order of episodes or asanas each preceding and succeeding episodes const- contributes towards building a firm practice now we will go ahead and see utkatasan The previous episode was Tadasan in which we did both Vimanasan and Urdhvahastasan. Both of these will be used to perform Utkatasan. We will now take you through the instructions for Utkatasan. For this, we start from Tadasan which was elaborately discussed in the previous episodes. With the feet and toes together, stretching every toe one away from the other equally placing weight on both feet you take the knees back thighs back lock the knee caps up from there you raise the chest up raise the sternum up spread the collarbone from center to side and take the shoulder back towards the back of the socket sharply bringing the back ribs towards the front and at the same time lowering the buttock muscle down you have to take your hands to the side in vimanasan with the hands at the side from originating from the center of the chest spreading the chest wide as if the chest was widening all the way towards the fingertips give a sharp lift to the sides of the body that is from the outer armpit to the outer hip sharply raise up from there take your hands straight up to urdhva hastasan as the hand grows up goes up the sides of the body should become tall as if the entire body was being lifted in urdhva hastasan from there pushing the knees and thighs back and directing the hips back in such a way that the buttock bone points back and down you will start to sit for utkatasan during the process of sitting as mentioned the hip should not go in the direction of the knee the hip goes away from the knee the buttock bone points down towards the ground and far back you have to sit until the thigh comes parallel towards the ground while the pose involves lowering the body the energy should be sharply lifted up intensely through the spine 
upon reaching that hold it for a few seconds then stamp the feet evenly come up once again in urdhvastasan take your hands to the side spreading the chest in vimanasan and then take your hands down to tadasan we now saw the first variation in which the hands were taken up before the practitioner sat down for utkatasan but there is a second variation where you can first sit down take your knees and thighs down for utkatasan and then raise your hands we will now see that variation for this we have to start as always from tadasan feet wide spread feet together toes wide spread weight evenly distributed through all parts of the feet knees back and thighs back here we will first set the uh top part of the body that is the upper chest region widening the collar bones you will have to take the shoulder back towards the socket and as the shoulder goes back on the socket you see the upper arm traveling backwards at that point take your hands on your waist without flaring out your elbow so your hands are on your waist if you flare out the elbow the chest collapses so you'll have to engage the upper arm deep back in the socket where your arms have gone back retaining the arms there you take your hands on your waist this is starkly a different picture from this so the shoulders back elbows back from that point raising the sides of the body up and the sternum up you will have to keep the chest expansive and tall already though the pull of utkatasan is back and down the movement of the chest is up with that action you set the lower trunk now where the practitioner sits low knitting the buttock bone towards the ground and far back taking the hip far back at this point remember we said that the grip of the chest is upward that needs to be retained while the squatting position goes until the thigh is parallel to the ground here you have to adjust the spine straight pulling the spine back as if it comes over the buttock from there you take your hand in urdhva hastasan then raise the spine further with the action of urdhva hastasan then stamp the feet and then come up lower your hands to tadasan I would now like to invite your attention to some pivotal actions that we've already discussed. In Utkatasan, we have mentioned this word buttock bones. Now I'd like to show you exactly what I mean by that. First, we start by sitting on the ground with the legs stretched out in front of us. Here, usually you see a contact between the back thigh and the ground. But when I bend my legs, keeping my back straight, then you feel that you're sitting on two piercing bones one on the root of the right buttock one on the base of the left buttock this is the buttock bone which you feel almost as if it's pricking the ground and it's important to know the location of this buttock bone on one caution though if you were to slouch then you move away from the buttock bone and start resting on the tail bone that is a wrong understanding so we'll have to make sure that you're pulling the back ribs in and at that point you land on what you need to sit on the sits bone or the buttock bone we will now discuss the movement of the shoulder always when a practitioner or a person stands you have the shoulder always falling towards the front of the socket and as you can see this when it falls on the front of the socket is results in a mild slouch this has to be reversed this shoulder bone or the upper arm bone has to be housed deep back within the socket it has to move far away from the breast that pulls the back ribs in and makes the spine tall so the shoulder should transition deep back in the socket we've mentioned that the arms should be lifted up in urdhva hastasan 
When you're lifting the arms in Urdhvastasana with an attempt to lift the whole spine, make the whole spine tall and erect, it's common that a person lifts the arm out of the socket in a way that the arm chokes the throat. This action is a wrong action. Instead, when you lift the arm, when you take the arm up, the arm that has a tendency to go out of the socket should be descended sharply in the socket while maintaining the lift of the spine. So again, this action is a wrong action where the throat is choked. This action where the upper arm is descended into the socket with the chest raised is the right action. Now we'll move to the lower trunk, that is the thighs. When we sit for Utkatasan, a person tries to usually, a beginner, tries to lower from the knee, where the knee goes ahead of the toe, ahead of the toe. This knee is a highly stressed knee when it goes in front of the toe. The knee should always be driven back away from the toe in the direction of the thigh. Again, this is wrong action when you sit and drive the knee back, thigh back towards the hip, that is the right action. So the latter action where the thigh moves back towards the hip, where the knee is pulled away from the toe, is the right action to go with. Finally, the movement of the spine. When we lower our trunk, usually the spine tends to fall this way. This is a dropped spine, when the spine falls. Instead, you should mark a length for the sternum and as you go down, the lift of the sternum must be retained. It shouldn't be compromised like that. Keeping the chest lifted, you should strike Utkatasan. There is then the action of the buttock muscle. And this is an important action to note. The buttock muscle, as in this is the entire gluteal muscle, and at the origin of the buttock, where the buttock starts, that point should be noted. Usually when a person goes into Utkatasan or any standing pose for that matter, there is a tendency to push the spine lower back forward because of which this buttock muscle raises up. This causes tremendous strain in the lower back. That should not happen. This buttock muscle should move down. And when this buttock muscle moves down, as you can see, the abdomen naturally moves towards the spine. Again, this is the wrong action, where the buttock is lifted and the lumbar is thrusted. This is the right action, where the buttock is lowered and the abdomen naturally falls back. It is with this action that you need to go to Utkatasan. This would be the right action. This, where the buttock pops back, lifts up and the lumbar protrudes is a wrong action, buttock down, abdomen going towards the spine. Now that we've seen the instructions and the actions in detail, I will now sum up the pose for you. We first start from Tadasan, feet and toes together, Toes widespread, weight distributed evenly on the right and left leg, knees and thighs back, sternum lifted, chest tall, the entire spine tall, shoulders gearing deep back in the socket, back ribs in and top buttock muscle down. How do we know that? The abdomen is not protrusive, abdomen naturally reclines towards the spine. From there, we take our hands in Vimanasan, spreading the chest wide. Again, the hands, if they are forward, the chest will collapse. So the hands need to be taken back until the chest is open. From there, turn the palms up, roll the upper arms, and then climb with all the ri ribs up to Urdhvahastasan, arms wedged in the socket, upper arms. From there, raising the chest up, we sit deep back for Utkatasan, buttock bone pointing down and back. Sit until the thigh comes parallel to the ground. At that point, do not allow the chest to collapse. 
The sternum should be tall as the hands raise up and the thighs go to a full 90 degree, establishing Utkatasana. From there, press the toes, feet, come up, lower the hands in Vimanasana and then in Tadasana. We will now show you how to address the problem of a strained lower back or a strained back in Utkatasan. You keep your hand on the waist and go down to Utkatasan with the chest spine lifted as well as the thighs back, buttock both back and down. Very often it so happens that while the buttock is being pushed and the chest is lifted, a strain is felt on the lower back. I will now show you this with the hands up in Urdhvahasdasan. As you can see, there is an entire arching lower back with the abdomen protruding forward. This puts immense pressure on the lower back. What you have to do is really cut this top buttock muscle down and pad the abdomen towards the spine. Now there's a transition, it's a lengthened spine, released spine and this is the spine necessary for Utkatasana. Stamping the feet, we come back up to Urdhvahastasana and then to Tadasana. Another approach to relieving lower back strain is by keeping the legs hip width apart. Take the hands on the waist. By hip width, I mean the portion, the line between the outer hip and outer ankle. When both feet are kept so wide such that the outer hip is in line with the outer ankle, that is hip width apart. You can go to Utkatasan with the legs apart because that again spreads the spinal muscles. But to make sure that during the process of Utkatasan, you are not collapsing the knees inside, to make sure it's useful or helpful to keep a foam block or a soft block between your thighs as we will show now. Taking a foam block, again this is not a heavy block, this is a light block which is wedged between the thigh right below the groin. Keeping the brick between the thigh, roll the thighs in. Just because you have a brick, there is an immediate spreading which reflects in the muscles of the lower back. It doesn't cramp, it spreads wide as well. With that, you can go to Utkatasan, holding the brick with your thighs and lowering. Nevertheless, you must keep in mind that the same action, taking your hands up to Urdhvahastasan, the same action where the buttock muscle is lowered and the abdomen is taken in must be there with or without a block. Keeping a block, pressing the feet down, you come up once again in Urdhvahastasan and lower your hands in Tadasan. Another difficulty students may face, no matter how long their practice is, is descending the thigh parallel to the ground. When you attempt to take the thigh parallel to the ground, it is common to actually struggle to cut the, that 90 degree position. And in that struggle, sometimes students drop their knees ahead of the toes. Both of this would be wrong. To not go to a 90 or worse to take the knee ahead of the toe, neither of this should be done. We'll show you a way of addressing this now. You use the flat surface of a wall in such a way that you lean against the wall and step forward with your feet around one, one and a half feet away from the wall. With that distance, you extend your hand to Vimanasan and then take your hand to Urdhvahastasan, palm facing forward, fingernails towards the wall. In this position, the back should not come off the wall like this. The back, lower back should be well placed against the wall for which the buttock muscle should be moving down, back against the wall. Do not distance it away. Here, when you keep your hands in Urdhvahastasana, you lower in such a way that you grip the thigh down to cut a 90 degrees. In this position, you can clearly note that as the thigh has lowered to a 90 degrees, neither is the knee projecting over the toe, nor is the descent of the thigh incomplete. Again, in this action, you must not arch the back like this. This arch is wrong. 
the back muscle must move down, buttock muscle, back against the wall, thigh low, knee behind the toe, hands crisply up in Urdhva Hastasana. After you finish this, placing the palm against the wall, you come up. Here it's pertinent to note that just because you've done it a few times against the wall, it doesn't mean that when we go straight to Utkatasana, we are immediately going to get the 90. You have to habituate the body to get accustomed to what a parallel line means before you are able to completely approach it in an independent practice. Another problem that a student may face is to keep the sternum lifted as you lower yourself in Utkatasana. This is definitely a challenge because while you move into Utkatasana, the direction in which your body or thigh is taken is downward and backward. Against this, the spine has to lift upward. For this, the spine has to be a very strong spine in order to be able to challenge, intensify that lift as you sit down. That may not be the case with a beginner. So I'll show you how to use the wall as a reference to make that happen. You stand with your leg around a foot, foot and a half distance from the wall. After you do that, you keep your hand cup shaped at chest level. Usually the hand should be as wide as the shoulder or slightly wider. But here I'm using a pillar which is narrower but essentially keep the hand shoulder width apart, hand at chest level. What happens is when right now my sternum or the bone between the chest is parallel to the face of the wall. But when you move to Utkatasana, it starts to sink downward and then it starts to lose that parallel contact or the parallel reference with the wall. For that, you have to stand, create a grip with your fingertip and this grip doesn't come from just the fingertip. Through the back ribs, through the lift of the sternum is that grip. So there is a connection here. Back ribs, lift of the sternum, grip. It's not an isolated or a dry grip. It has to be an organic grip. With that, as you move down to Utkatasana, you see, I'm trying to keep the sternum tall, trying to keep the sternum tall as I move to Utkatasana. At this level, you can even straighten the arms to push your spine back, push your spine back. Give that lift to the sternum. At this, you can see the face of the sternum the face of the wall, R1. From here you stand up and release. You're using the wall here not to help you or support you do the action, but you use the wall's parallel surface as a reference, using which you can accomplish that pose. In today's episode, we saw various sections to a practice, general instructions, queries, clarifications of certain actions, certain challenges in practice and how it can be overcome. And hence, there are various dimensions to the practice of an asana. The asana itself is very nuanced and one has to concentrate, apply and do an asana mindfully. Moving to the benefits of Utkatasana, because we go to a low squat-like position, exercising and applying all parts of the lower limb, that is the legs, the thigh, the thigh bone, the ankle, the knee, the shin bone, the feet, they are all properly engaged, wholly engaged, delivering great benefit and strength to both the muscular and the skeletal structure of the leg. And then, as we saw in Tadasana, we did Vimanasan and then Urdhvahastasan. Vimanasan helps in spreading the diaphragm, which Utkatasan then lifts. The entire spine is lifted, the diaphragm also. And when the diaphragm has that spreaded gentle lift, it offers a relieving massage to the respiratory region. When an asana is done mindfully, it offers several benefits, but for that, we have to apply our mind steadily in the practice of an asana, which is a skill that one learns over time. In the upcoming episodes, we'll see more asanas. Hope you found today's session useful. Thank you. 